We freeze in the winter time. We can get sometimes negative 20, negative 30 below with wind chill, but that frost line can go down pretty far. And being that this pipe is buried only about a foot below grade, we want to ensure that that pipe never freezes with water in it and cracks. At the bottom of this ADS pipe, I ended up taking a piece of our geotextile underlayment and I basically made a bonnet at the bottom and then used very, very heavy duty zip ties and zip tied it to the bottom. The reason I did that is I wanted a permeable layer so that groundwater, in the event that there is some, can perk up through that fabric and fill the sump pit without bringing any debris inside with it. It just looks incredible. I can't wait for this bridge to come in and really just be the icing on the cake, but it just turned out beautiful. Everybody, it's day three out here. It is wrap up day, finish line. I, I want to say finish line Friday, but it's only Thursday, but we are going to be approaching the finish line later today. The boys just got here. The main things on the agenda today to button everything up would be to get that waterfall back behind me built. We have to get a couple steps in over where Corey and Matt are using some of the outcropping chunks that will lead you from the bridge that will end up being there to a little bench space, which the homeowner will be providing later. But it's all said and done with the bridge and all that stuff. We have to run the plumbing line from that far our bio falls all the way along the near side of the pond here into my skimmer over here. So we're gonna be kind of working our way back towards the skimmer once I get everything roughed in, all of the elbows, all the connections, MPTs on the backside of the skimmer, all that good stuff. So they're working on that right now. I'm going to be over here by the skimmer figuring out all the plumbing. We have two pumps going in there plus the overflow which is going to a sump tank which will daylight any excess water from this pond being overfilled out to the street to storm water manage. Lots and lots of stuff in store for us today. You can see they're already getting hard after it. We'd like to only be here a couple hours to button up and then we will go start another project after this. Just wanted to take a quick second and kind of show you the configuration coming out of the backside of the skimmer. So right here, there was bulkhead, bulkhead, bulkhead. What we did was is this line comes out this way, sweeps hard to the left, and then we have our bowls teed up and over the liner there. And then the rest of that two inch line continues to go up towards the 2500 biofalls that was existing. Next, the center bulkhead fitting is the overflow. And that is this pipe here. And you can see I've trenched it all the way back and what I did was is I ran a piece of ADS pipe it is a 15 inch diameter pipe and I drilled two holes in it I drilled one way down in here and you can see that's where my inlet for this sump pit is down there and then this hole right up there is going to be where the ejector line which is an inch and a half line is going to go back out and then actually sit back in this trench and scoot out that way and tie into an existing drain tile that runs out to the front of the street for a pop-up so in the event that this pipe ever overfills it will hit that overflow elbow inside the skimmer which I'll show you in a little bit that water will by gravity be fed through this two inch line down to the bottom of this pit fill up this pit initiating the float switch on the sump pump and then the sump pump will engage and discharge the water out through that hole which will have a inch and a half line running out that way and then it snakes down and goes around to the front of the property there the second elbow that you see over there that does not have a pipe attached to it is going to be for our 3pl pump which will will feed our 6,000 biofalls. I do not have that attached and buried yet, but as soon as I get done flopping this dirt over covering this pipe, I'm gonna go ahead and run that line coming this way. It looks like we have a bit of a negative flow in the pipe should the pumps ever shut off because of how deep that biofalls is sunk down there. So when we come and do the fall shutdowns, we will have to blow out these lines and cap both ends inside the skimmer and inside the biofalls for this line because we don't want any bellies in the pipe because in our climate, we freeze in the winter time we can get sometimes negative 20 negative 30 below with wind chill but that frost line can go down pretty far and being that this pipe is buried only about a foot below grade we want to ensure that that pipe never freezes with water in it and cracks because that would suck to come back and fix it so we're gonna probably have to blow out these lines because of the way elevations are working because gravity will not completely empty that line into the skimmer when we undo the check valve i will come back in a few minutes and give you more of an update once everything is buttoned up and done over here
everybody, I am back. It's been a few weeks since we've been on the project and kind of wrapped up our end of the construction phase. I couldn't wait to show you the finished product. The homeowner has done an excellent job of putting a bunch of the plants back in that we kind of disrupted and displaced through the construction process, but I am loving it and the way it's coming together. All of the landscape is starting to soften back up, green back up. We have had a couple weeks of just straight drought here in Illinois. Some things look a little yellow and there are some leaves in the pond. You know, that's mother nature. She has dealt us this hand and we're doing the best with it. But the pond itself looks really, really, really nice. I love the revamp or the reimagination of this water feature. So let me turn the camera around, stop yapping, and kind of walk through with you what we did and what it looks like now. is two two by tens going across the pond. Now, Bernie out in California from Skyline Bridges and Skyline Ponds is going to build us a six by three foot wide arched bridge. Very low profile, but an arched bridge taking you over to this kind of stepping area. And there is eventually going to be a bench back there so that the homeowners can really sit back there and just kind of enjoy a little peace and serenity underneath this river birch. Maybe it's a book reading spot. Maybe it's just a little Zen garden, but you can see that they've already done an excellent job of repopulating their water feature with all their very whimsical elements and their little decorations and, and just definitely put their own unique style on things. You've got the toucan back there. You've got frogs all over the place. You can see we've got all oh, this really cool, looks like a slate crocodile over there. Again, another frog. It looks like he's holding a camera. So they must be watching their fish from inside the house. You can see that they obviously Obviously take great joy in interacting with the water feature because one of the things that I noticed right away is this empty chair sitting with a bag of our fish food pellets. So they must be sitting out here and feeding the fish throughout the day periodically or in the evenings, which is what we love to see. We love to see our homeowners and pond customers really live in the aquascape lifestyle and interacting with their fish, you know, which is part of what makes these things so incredible. It's that living, breathing element that they have. I love the waterfalls that we added over here. Now this is a 6,000 bio falls now hidden back in through there. Nick and the rest of the guys did an excellent job of disguising the top of it. You can see we've got a 2,500 bio falls back up over here to the right. This was the original portion and then we peeled apart this side of the liner and sunk that bio falls pretty close to all the way in the ground from existing grade over there. Did an excellent job, like I said, disguising it and it just creates this really cool side of the pond that pushes the water all the way across as it's drawn through this raceway underneath the bridge and you can see we've got our skimmer box located all the way over there. Now because of topography on this site the elevation back behind that skimmer box is about 14 inches above even the top of the skimmer box and we had to sink that skimmer box down considerably in order to maintain the water level in the pond as well as maintain the functionality of the skimmer. So we had to sink that skimmer box down but you can see the stones back behind the skimmer and that's retaining all that soil from that raised berm it goes all the way back. This is the lowest area of the yard over here. That was a creative solution on how to disguise that skimmer box without making it feel weird and having a bunch of soil kind of hovering out over the top. You can see the two spillway bowls came back into the water feature. This one got sunk into the edge of the pond over there and then we've got this really cool big bowl that overflows on all sides in this area of the pond. The circulation on this pond is absolutely incredible because you've got the push from the waterfalls coming across. You've You've got the spill bowl over here, which is helping prevent a little dead zone on that side of the pond. And then you've got the agitation of the water here. So everything that kind of stuck in the corners eventually gets sucked into that skimmer box. One thing I talked about earlier in the video also that I wanted to remind you guys is we have an overflow pipe on this pond. So when the pond overfills, an overflow pipe comes out of the back of the skimmer and comes down over here to our sump pump pit. And here is that sump pump pit. So you can see that the water will fill this, initiate the float and then the pipe that's discharging this pit goes into a drain tile that runs the property line and daylights the water out to the street. So the sump pump was a creative solution to what otherwise would be probably a problematic feature on this pond because the pond is located in the lowest point of the yard. This is where all the water on the property drains to. We needed to figure out a way to keep this pond from overfilling and filling this whole backyard area with water and making it a sloppy mess. And we wanted to prevent the customer from 
having a poor experience with a water feature. It's not ideal, but it is in the ideal location based on how they live with their property. We needed to make sure and ensure that periods of heavy rain, that kind of stuff, that the pond would always maintain its own level and we could satisfactorily get rid of any excess water. So we had to come up with the creative sump pump solution and get that water out to the front of the street to daylight um, out there rather than keeping this nice and sloppy. If you remember when we got out here, this was all soaked in through here. And now, obviously we haven't had any rain, but I am walking on what feels like concrete walking around on this turf. We've got our two different pumps located in the skimmer box as well as the outflow pipe for the overflow. One pump is feeding both bowls as well as that original waterfall. The other pump goes straight to this biofalls and that's actually our 3PL and then we've got a 5 going to the other three features. So I love how split waterfalls appears as if though it's just coming right out of this little hillside and berm area. Notice how the biofalls are very very well disguised using rock and gravel as well as plant material. I love that second we turn the keys over to the homeowner you can see that they start making it their own with all of the intricate and whimsical little garden details that you see all the way around here. It just looks incredible. I can't wait for this bridge to come in and really just be the icing on the cake but it just turned out beautiful. They obviously have a green thumb because you can see all the different color that's around. I love the grass edge right to the edge along this side in a bunch of areas but I just love 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 how it turned out and I can't wait to see this thing mature over the years. Let me give you one last glimpse here. So neat.